Hey gang, what's good? So in case you somehow missed it, Bethesda was running a big, long stream the other day that culminated in Todd Howard appearing on screen and saying that they were going to show a teaser for their newest game. That game is Fallout 76. We have something really cool to show you. Um, it's a tease for our next game, and we'll see you all at E3 June 10th. Thanks again. As soon as I saw the title, I thought that it was time to start making some hot takes. Everybody knows the Great War was in the year 2077. Could this mean that this fabled and long-rumored multiplayer Fallout game takes place one year before the bombs drop? Well, a hot take it was, indeed. The 76 instead refers to Vault 76. So, during the teaser, a cover for John Denver's Take Me Home Country Roads starts playing. Immediately, more hot takes start rolling in. Obviously, the song has heavy mention of West Virginia, so it's kind of reasonable to think that this one might be set in, well, West Virginia. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. If anything, it seems to be located around Washington, D.C., meaning it's around the states of Maryland and just plain old Virginia, if you want to stretch it. Anyway, we know this because Vault 76 has already been mentioned in Fallout Canon. In Fallout 3, at the Citadel, there's a Vault Tech terminal that the Lion's Pride Brotherhood are using to track down vaults in the DC hellhole area. I loaded up my old Fallout 3 save and checked it out. Vault 76 was meant to be one of the control vaults, so there's no messed up experiment going on. The one catch, however, is that it's meant to open up after just 20 years. There's even an audio log from the Mothership Zeta DLC that features a vault Tech employee who was just inspecting Vault 76 and got abducted. Hey now, no reason to get yourselves worked up. Whatever you need, I'm going to tell it to you. Well, pretty sure you want me to talk into this thing. So, here goes. My name is Giles Walstoncroft. I'm the current Assistant Chief Executive Officer of the Vault Tech Corporation. I was inspecting the construction site of Vault 76 when I was captured what I can only assume are alien beings from another world. I'm not sure what they want from me or what they will do to me. Whatever they need, I will readily provide. Perhaps I can bridge our communication gap and establish a rapport with them, we can enter into an exclusive trade agreement. In fact, instead of talking to this damn machine, I'm going to attempt to address them directly. On behalf of the vault -Tec Corporation, I'd like to extend a heartfelt welcome to you. Wait, you don't need that. Wait! Keep in mind, though, that this could be information that's been slightly retconned, and the location of the vault really could turn out to be in West Virginia. I say this because of the date shown on the Pip-Boy during the teaser, October 27th, 2102. That's five years after this vault was meant to be opened, according to the Citadel's terminal. Of course, going the route of Occam's Razor, it looks like Vault 76 is already totally empty. So it's more likely that for some reason our characters stayed behind or returned sometime after the grand opening. Probably the meaning behind the song playing is the whole take me home part, right? Now, what is interesting about the date is that 2102 is around the time that things start popping off around Mariposa, California. Richard Gray transforms into the master who winds up being the main antagonist of the very first Fallout game. He even claims his very first human victim in November of that year. As cool as it would be for you to be playing as that first human victim, or to have a run-in with Harold before he becomes a tree in Fallout 3, California just seems too far from Washington, D.C. Most of what we do know comes from Jason Schreier and some of his inside sources over at Kotaku. It's very much worth noting that Schreier has a very good track record when it comes to reporting on leaks. It's not a perfect track record, but it's very good! I believe he was the guy who first reported on and helped leak Fallout 4's script for its opening monologue and revealed the Boston setting. This was back in 2013, almost two years before Fallout 4 came out. 
Anyway, I suggest you give his article a read. I'll have a link in the description. The long short of it is that Fallout 76 is not going to be a single-player narrative experience. It's going to be a spin-off, something the Fallout franchise is already kind of familiar with. Supposedly, this will focus more on crafting and base building, making use of systems we saw in Fallout 4. Even more interesting is that this will supposedly be multiplayer. Good points of reference would be Rust or Ark Survival Evolved. I personally think that this is A-OK. -okay. It doesn't need to be a big, sprawling RPG. If anything, I think Bethesda being more loose with their IP and inviting more toying around with it is a good thing. I think of it like how comic book characters work. You have a lot of different story arcs written by a lot of different people. Some you'll like and some you won't. Maybe even someday, this means that we'll get another Mojave area game. Anyway, what I think is important is that they nail the messaging on this, or else a ton of people are going to be real disappointed. Unfortunately, I think we can already see a lot of folks reading this trailer as Fallout 76 being a core game with an experience to match. All that said, it seems as if Fallout 76 is going to have some level of story. I'd even go so far as to throw out another hot take and say that the now freelance Chris Avalon will be contributing his talent to the writing team. In case you don't know, Chris Avalon most recently and relevantly did writing for New Vegas, among other Fallout projects. I think he's involved given his updated profile picture on Facebook back in October 3rd of 2017. I think it seems to imply that he returned to the franchise in some way, and I'd guess that way is Fallout 76. Anyway, who we know for sure is working on this game is Bethesda Game Studios, including their most recent addition in Austin, Texas, the former Battlecry Studios. Now, Battlecry were working on a multiplayer game by the same name as their studio, but it never really saw the light of day. It seems like things just didn't work out for the project. Regardless, it seems as if Fallout 76 first existed as an experimental prototype for Fallout 4. Uh, Bethesda was testing the idea of creating a multiplayer game. This sounds similar to how they ported Skyrim from previous generation consoles to the current generation long before they ever released the Skyrim Special Edition remaster. The goal was to acclimate themselves with the new hardware to help with Fallout 4's development. I'd imagine Fallout 76 could even be an experiment for multiplayer in later Bethesda Game Studios titles, like Starfield? Anyway, what's most interesting to me is how they plan on monetizing this game. It's clear to me that Bethesda is seeking ways to generate a continuous stream of revenue from their IP, rather than relying, or worse, gambling, on core game releases every four or five years. I think the Creation Club was an attempt at that, but I honestly have no idea how it panned out for them. Either way, the Elder Scrolls already has a few continuous streams of revenue in the form of the Elder Scrolls Online and Elder Scrolls Legends, both of which have had recent expansions, so it's working out for them. Their Fallout franchise, however, only has the mobile Fallout Shelter game. Uh, Fallout 76, if received well, could be an opportunity for them to push regular expansion content, or even, <laughs> God forbid, loot boxes! That said, I really don't imagine they'd go the loot box route for such an experimental game, especially after recent events, uh, you know, all the EA stuff, all the, you know, loot boxes or gambling stuff. Nonetheless, I'm very much looking forward to Fallout 76. My friends and I already sometimes like playing games like Ark, so as long as this is a solid iteration on the genre, I welcome the Fallout theme and veneer. I also like the slight reverence to the older Fallout games, the imagery of the television broadcasts, the classic Pip-Boy, and what sounds like Ron Perlman's voice work are all really nice. Supposedly, we won't have long to wait. Rumor has it that Fallout 76 is due to launch November 13th of this year. I look forward to hearing more about it at E3. And I'll also add that Danny O'Dwyer over at Noclip is doing a documentary series on both Bethesda and the creation of Fallout 76. 
I'd highly recommend checking it out as he wraps things up. I've followed Danny for several years now since the GameSpot days, and he's a good dude. I'll include a link in the description. Until next time, peace.